Hey folks, I want to talk about the cancellation property in some rings. So not all rings have the ca cancellation property. So, you know, Z mod 12Z is a ring. Okay. And the cancellation property would be that if um, AB equals AC, then B equals C. Okay. That's not going to be true in Z mod 12Z. So let A be 3. And um, let B and C be four and eight. Okay. So in Z mod 12Z, three times four is 12, which is zero. And three times eight is 24, which is zero. Okay. But this does not mean that four is equal to eight. No, four is not equal to eight in Z mod 12Z, okay? So yeah, I had AB equal to AC, but in Z mod 12Z, I can't cancel the, the threes. I can't cancel the A's to get four is equal to eight, okay? So cancellation property is not true in all rings. It's not true in Z mod 12Z. Integral domains are at certain type of ring. I'm just saying the word, because you'll hear the word later in your mathematical life but you don't need to like the word. <laughs> but integral domains are a commutative rings, so multiplication is, is commutative. And no zero divisors. So I never have x times y equals zero unless one of x or y are zero. Example integral domains are the integers, the rationals, the reals, the complexes, the Gaussian integers are an integer domain. Um, polynomials are an integer dom integral domain. The rationals that join the square root of two. Z mod PZ is, is an integer domain of P is prime. I mean, any fields, any field is, is, is certainly an integral domain. Non-examples, things that are not in integral domains. Z mod 10Z is not an in integral domain because it has zero divisors. Five times two is 10 or zero, even though neither five nor two are zero. You know, matrices, in the last video, we saw these diagonal matrices that were not zero and, and multiplied to give us zero. So, I mean, yeah, you have zero divisors, but even worse, if I consider all matrices, it's not even a commutative ring. Multiplication is not commutative necessarily for matrices. And uh, functions, the ring of functions from the reals to the reals, is not an integral domain. We saw in the last video these two functions, f and g, neither of which were zero, but multiplied together to give us zero. Not all rings have the cancellation property, but integral domains have the cancellation property that if a and b and c are elements, and if a is non-zero, then if a, b is equal to a, c, you can cancel the a's to get b equals c. Let me give you the wrong proof. The wrong proof is what you would do in a field, but you can't do here, okay? So the wrong proof is A is not equal to zero, so A inverse exists. That's the wrong step. You can't do that here. You could do that in a field. In a field, non-zero elements have inverses. So then AB equals AC implies Let's just multiply by A inverse on both sides. A inverse AB equals A inverse AC. And then the A inverse and the A cancels to give me B equals C. That works in fields, but we can't do that in integral domains. The reason being A inverse need not exist, okay? The right proof is going to be this nice mix of addition and multiplication. So AB equals AC implies, let's subtract AC from both sides. AB minus AC is equal to zero. Okay. So I'm using addition subtraction. Now I'm using the distributive property. 
there's another way to write AB minus AC. It's A times B minus C. Okay. And now is where we use the fact that we have no zero divisors. Zero divisors are non-zero elements that can multiply together to give you zero. But if we have no zero divisors, whenever you multiply two things to get zero, one of those has to be zero, okay? So since we have no zero divisors, either A equals zero or B minus C equals zero. But I told you that A is non-zero, okay? For the proof in fields, you used A not being zero to give you a multiplicative inverse. In integral domains, you use A not equaling zero to give you that, okay, A is not zero, so therefore B minus C has to equal zero. So B equals C. All right. In summary, integral domains are particular types of rings. They're commutative rings with no zero divisors. Um, Z mod 12Z, for example, is not an integral domain because it has zero divisors. Three times four is equal to 12 or zero. And we saw at the beginning of this video how the cancellation property is false in Z mod 12Z. In fields, we proved the cancellation property because we said if AB equals AC and A was on zero, then A had an inverse, multiply by the inverse to get B equals C, okay? In integral domains, you still have this cancellation property. It's just cool, you have to prove it differently using addition and the distributive law. We start with pretend AB equals AC with A non-zero, subtract AC from both sides, distribute on the left to get A times B minus C is equal to zero. We have no zero divisors, so either A is zero or B minus C is zero. As an assumption, we assumed A was non-zero, so therefore B minus C is equal to zero, or in other words, B is equal to C. It's quite nice. It's like in the integers, right? In the integers, that's an integral domain. <laughs> if you have in the integers that 5x is equal to 5y, you know, that implies that x is equal to y. All right, I'm out of time, so I'll end there. Thanks so much.